So what I'm doing here is applying a glide to the tibia. I'm pulling the tibia forwards. I'm gonna push the talus back with my hand. And Max is gonna come in and out with me. Good. In and out of dorsiflexion. So I'm just guiding him. If he was at the end of the bed, if, if you shuffle a little further forwards, good. If you need a bit more guidance, I can use my shoulder to guide his knee. So I can really block that talus. Apply a good glide and just come with me, Max. Yeah, good. And we work together. Great. All the way in, all the way out. Good. Just stay on contact in there. Great. Okay. And we only need to do 10 of these. Good. Coming forwards. Great. Good. So he's going a long way into range, which is, of course, not surprising because he's got no deficit there. Um, but that is a quite a powerful technique. Reassess the knee to wall straight after that. And most of the time, you'll get some immediate improvement. Even if it's half a centimetre, if we're dealing with a uh, four centimetre knee to wall and you give your patient extra half a centimetre, that will translate into function um, quite rapidly and uh, make a significant change. Good. One final little uh, trick we use for dorsiflexion is I need another piece of equipment. I'm going to get your feet off the end of the bed here. Um, I'll, be, I'll be right back. All right, now, this is a tib bar. You're a youngster, so you probably saw these um, pop up on your Instagram feed over lockdown. Um, but yeah, these didn't exist, to my knowledge, um, 10 years ago. But And we've used this quite well in the clinic. Now, if the patient's foot is not big enough, then it's much better um, with their shoes on. So I'll get you to just have a little play around with that. Just Have you used one of these before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. At the gym? Yeah. Nice. Taking it through range here, it's going to do a couple of things. I'll just talk you through it. Um, it's been a really great tool for us in the clinic. Of course, if there is a strength deficit, and there is, on this side in tibialis anterior on our testing, we're immediately going to be strengthening. But the other really cool thing here uh, that you get as an added bonus is as you're pulling up through range, the movement is a, a real arc, and that's exactly how the talus is shaped. And so as you pull up, you get a relative posterior glide of the talus, which is exactly the typical pattern. Not always, but the typical pattern. You ready to go again? Yeah. Got it? Yep. So you test and measure it. Typically, we'll have you want to have five, six different techniques of how you can improve ankle dorsiflexion and start with the most popular. That would be mobilizations with movement for me and work your way through your list because you will find s some work uh, with some patients, some um, do not, and you need to be able to quite rapidly find something that does. Great. So we've had some stunning results with this with uh, straight after doing about 20 reps, like quite high. Uh, you'll, you'll see um, an immediate change in knee to wall as well. Part of me thinks also there might be some reciprocal inhibition going on there where when we activate on the front, um, we relax and lengthen through the posterior musculature, which um, is typically chronically uh, shortened and um, often in a, in a degree of, I think, subconscious spasm in, in chronic ankle instability. So it's a great way of turning um, those muscles off, getting them to calm down. Okay, now the final and perhaps the most simple way of improving your ankle dorsiflexion is using a slant board. I'll bring this back in. So I'll get you standing up, Max. And I'll get you to come around here. And we're going to face this board uh, the other way around, actually. We're going to use it as a, as a stretch board. Okay, so I've immediately gone to a 30-degree decline board, spun it around. Now it's a calf stretch board. Um, we're doing this with with Max because, um, I'll get you to step off a, a sec, because he's got so much range. Uh, if your patient does not have the sort of range in dorsiflexion that we have here today, uh, then you'll start with no board, and but the instructions are the same. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is block this here, bring this up, this is gonna replicate the patient's kitchen bench. And if you put your ankle that's restricted, let's say it's the right one right up on there, uh, a little higher, good. Okay, the instructions here are crucial. What we want to have is a relaxed anterior aspect of that joint. So those muscles need to stay relaxed. And a little
little bit more. Can we push your toe down? Yeah, great, okay. So we need to have those anterior muscles relax. Otherwise, you get compression at the front of the ankle joint, which is we want to avoid. Instruct the patient to lock their knee out. And then Max, what you're gonna do is lean on here and bring your hip up and over your ankle. Good, and keep this as relaxed as possible. Perfect, what are you feeling? Uh, sorry, right, so, yeah, yeah, yes, so you'll get a hamstring. So that's why we call this a posterior chain stretch. In chronic ankle instability, they will be really, really restricted somewhere posteriorly, generally. And holding this for 60 seconds has proven incredibly effective at immediately improving knee to wall 